Hello and welcome to another video. Today we have a board that we've already seen before. This is not the exact same board, but it's the same model. It's an ASRock B550 B450 M Steel Legend. This is the different one that we had before. Before we had a knocked off resistor somewhere in this area, resulting in the PCIe slot not working. But this time I got a different story for this board. The seller said that he was overclocking on this board with some sort of processor and he had limits off or something like that and the processor hit 100 degrees and then his PC shut off and never turned on again. That sounds like a very interesting story to me. Um, I, would b I wouldn't believe that that is the actual cause of why this main board broke. Because what I can already see is when I took this board out, there's a standoff still on there with the screw. And what is more, I hope you can see that, there's a lot of damage around that screw hole. So, this looks like another trace repair. And what I also can see around the other ones, like for example this one, there's also exposed copper there. So before taking any measurements or doing anything, we're going to go onto the, under the microscope and we're going to see what is up with this. I am quickly going to remove this standoff by myself, probably going to use a screwdriver and some pliers. And I will see you then under the microscope. So this is the upper part of the screw hole. This looks bad. But as far as I can see, there are no traces damaged right here. This is all only ground, so this shouldn't cause any problem. So, and this is where the fun begins. I have no <laughs> words on how anyone can do anything like this. We're going to try to find out if any of these traces actually are damaged. I think these at the top ones are the most likely ones. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a Dremel. And we're going to uh, dremel away at this point and at this point to see if these lines are continuous. And then we're going to see how they result. I think these wires all here are still good. There's a lot of tra uh, ma masking taken away, but I think they're still okay. Just like the ones here at the right. These dents might be a problem. Whatever this connector is, this had a huge hit but I think it's also okay I think this is not a problem this is not deep enough and there might be problems here where it's hit right there and right there so we will need to also um, get mask away here and some here or maybe even from there and check these lines for continuity now I'm going to go under the Dremel and we're going to see what what will result. And now I removed some of that masking so we can check the lines. We're going to check the lower one, it has continuity, and the upper one has also continuity. So this line is still good and they are not shorted together. Now we can check the lines down here. Let's start with the big trace right here. This is continuity. Then with this, this trace, this continuity, the next one has continuity, one more, this has continuity. Now we're going to check the two lower ones. This has continuity and the lower one has continuity. Very interesting. So all of these traces look awful. But they are actually all have a continuous path and I couldn't see any shorts on them. Um, shorts in terms of connected to a line that is close to them. The screw hole might be a problem, but it's hard to tell from here. Um, what else? I'm, I'm going to look at the top side here, how, how bad this is uh, damaged. And then we're going to see the other screw holes because I can already see an, on other screw holes there's also some physical damage. Um, be right back. And now you can see a different screw hole. You can see more physical damage down here and up there. I'm going to do this off screen, going to dremel away, going to test these traces 
don't think any of these are broken but I want to be sure and I'm going to get back to you as soon as I'm done with it. The last spot didn't have any broken traces. This is another spot that is physically damaged but this is very minor. I don't think this will be a problem. Another screw hole, yet more physical damage. But this time again, I don't think this is a problem. These traces are quite thick and I only think the masking got ripped off. Same story here, more physical damage, but nothing to, to worry about. And we are back. And as of now, I couldn't make out any more physical damage. On some places the board looks awful, but I couldn't find anything obvious. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to check the 12 volts. And the 12 volts has about 100 ohms. That looks very bad. We're going to check this again on the other side. Um, let's just quickly make some more measurements. We're going to take a screw hole right there. We're going to go into these ones. These should be 12 volts, 5 volts, and so on and so forth. Just getting some of the measurements here to see if there's anything obvious. This one is 3.3 .3 down here. And the fourth one I think should be 5 VSB here. Okay, let's see. This is for the PCH. Okay, that seems high, but whatever. Not going to care about that now. This looks good. Let's see for this one up here. This has 100 ohms. I think this is normal. Let's see here. These are the 86 ohms. I think I also see there. That is going to be interesting. Let's see right here. That is also around 100. So I'm pretty sure we have something wrong with the CPU voltage. We're going to check that um after we've checked the battery the battery is 2.86 which is kind of low let's go into the back side now go into resistance once more let's check again the 12 volts here and let's check from the 12 volts to the capacitors to the output capacitors And I think we have a broken MOSFET. We're going to cl uh, see that. We're going to take the cooler off, off of the CPU VRM. And we're going to see you then. Now our board is removed. And what I found is, if you go onto the one of these coils for the VRM, you go onto the 12 volts on the slot at the top, you see my multimeter shows 0 ohms. So, some of these MOSFETs are broken. We are going to do some voltage injection. I'm going to prepare that and we're going to get our thermal camera out and we're going to see where our problem lies. And now we are set up. We have one ground clip that is connected to this phase, which these phases are in parallel. And we ha also have this one connected to the 12 volts to the upper one there and if we use our multimeter we put it into resistance mode put it right here so you can see it and we go across these two points going to onto the clamp and here you see you have zero ohms so next thing is I'm going to hook up the camera for the power supply and I'm going to get my thermal camera and then we're going to see who is our culprit and now we're hooked up you see in the bottom right our power supply, you see the thermal camera right here. Let's switch it around like this. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to take the positive lead. I'm going to attach it. We're going to see how what the current does. The current is 1 amp at 1 volts. Let's see. I think this would be what you probably can't see. This is right 
there. It's that upper MOSFET right there that is broken. As you can see, my finger is right there. And that's the MOSFET. As you can see, everything else is not heating up. But that MOSFET. So, um, yeah, let's remove that one. It's pretty easy to, to see. It's the top one. Let's remove that one and see if our short still remained and what the board does then. So one more thing. Um, I just looked at the footage and I think it didn't say 1 amp, it said 10 amps. So I think we put all the 10 amps that my power supply had into this little MOSFET. And as you can see, there's also some solder pressed out on that one. So pretty sure this one is the bad one. For just for reference, the marking. Let's clean this up a little bit so we can have this for later. As you can see, this is a Nikos PZ0903BK. So, what we're going to do now is I'm going to add some leaded solder to the sides of it that we can see that are exposed. And then I'm going to take our um, my hot air station and uh, we're going to take that MOSFET out. Now our MOSFET is removed, looking really awful, really sorry. Let's see, continuity mode, and it's open, uh, yeah, it's short circuited. And now let's do the same measurement that we did before again. And now we see kilo ohms, that looks really good. I think that was the problem. Now, um, if you've seen my GPU repair video, you've seen me do, do this before, but I'm not going to solder any component into here. I want to see how this will react if I try to put in a CPU now, if VCore is actually going to start with one phase missing. On a GPU, I know that it can work. On a mainboard, I have not tried this. If the controller is going to make a problem with that or not, I do not know, but we're going to find out together. If not, I will need to find a spare part for this. I'm going to build it up and I'm going to see you then. And now we are back up and running. I have everything on here. GPU, postcard, another postcard. Our power supply, got a button in the, down, uh, in the corner down right. You see the power supply, I've not turned it on. This can have multiple outcomes right now. Something else could blow up because there might be something damaged as well, like the controller, for example. But I do not know. I can't confirm that right now. We're going to find out. Other thing could be that it just works. Another thing could be that it doesn't work because that one face is missing. But we're going to find out together. Let's see. Turning the power supply on. Oh, that is not what we need. We need 12 volts. 12 volts now and so far 80 milliamps looks just right let's hit the power button and see what happens this looks interesting so far oh yeah the, uh, it looks very good let's see the power consumption looks just just nice to be honest uh, 3 4 amps in between we had 7 amps Looks like how I would expect it. The postcodes on the DDR test are already on AF. We don't see a boot signal yet. No post. No image so far. We have 8A on that one. Can't tell you what that is supposed to mean. Uh, right now, it's very static, our current consumption about... 4 amps. Um, yeah, it's getting warm. Um, I have no indication if this board is working right now because we didn't get 
any picture out of it. But what we're going to try now is I'm going to plug in a keyboard. This is a PS2 keyboard in particular. And what we're going to do is we're going to watch if either the num or the caps lock is going to turn on because this is an indication if the board is running or not. Let's see again. We turned it on. And we have caps lock actually working. Uh, no, num. This means this board is actually on. Um, now the question will re remains why we don't have any picture. Let's... what we're going to do. Hmm. Let's now try a different GPU in here. And see if that changes our outcome of not having picture. I don't want to run it too long without the one face and without the cooler on there and without cooling on the GPU uh, CPU itself. So let's try this again. I have now the RX 460 in here. I'm going to plug this in again and let's see. Oof, once more. Now turning on. Still have an indication on here that still works. But our capture device seems to give us nothing so far. And now we are back. The actual problem laid within a capture card that I had and not with the main board. As you can see now on the screen, the main board boots up perfectly fine and gives out an image that we had before already, just we couldn't see it. The, the caps lock or the num lock confirmed that to us, but now the board is working perfectly fine without the one face. Now we know that does not only work on GPUs, but it can also work on main boards. So, we had a good video now. I was able to show you something, a broken VRM for once. We haven't had that before. And the story from the seller could actually be true because this would be one of the results I would be expecting when overclocking would have gone wrong. That one of the MOSFETs failed short circuit. But who knows where in the reality really lies, what happened to this board, how it became uh, how it came to this state that it is in right now, but I'm happy that I could fix it. Happy to show you how voltage injection works to to see what MOSFET broke and that you need a lot of amps to sh uh, to actually get to see what kind of what MOSFET is short circuited. And now all that is left to do for me is to find a spare part. I'm probably not going to find the exact MOSFET that I took off from there, but I'll have a lot of spare MOSF uh, MOSFETs on other mainboards that are no fixes. I'm probably just going to see if I can find anything that is relatively close from the RDS on and the uh, maximum amperage that uh, the MOSFET supported that was on there. And yeah, that's about it. That's all I'm going to do off screen to this board. And then it's going to be patch packaged up and ready. So thank you very much for watching. Hit the like and subscribe button. I hope to see you in the next video. And thank you very much for watching. Have a good one. Bye.